Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad everybody here, is here today on our Fred Sunday. Uh, you know, I, I titled this the value of friendship, uh, the sermon that I'm preaching today. I'm going to be in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. If you didn't read your Bible, um, you can pick a pew Bible up. And it's on page 541 in the pew Bible if you want to turn there. You know, I'd like, like to welcome everyone today. Uh, we got people here, um, friends, and, and that were invited, and I'm just glad that everyone's here. So, um, if you have turned there, please stand as I read God's Word. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, starting in verse 9, says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion, but woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift them up. Furthermore, if two lie down together, they keep warm, but how can one be warm alone? And if one can overpower him who is alone, and two can resist him, a cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. Please pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the ability to come to you and, and, and sing in songs of praise and worship to you. And Lord, um, that we can go to the communion table and just uh, celebrate the fact that Christ came down for each and every single one of us. And the love that he has. God, I pray as I bring the message to you today that these words um, that will be spoken here will be your words and not mine. Because God, I know I just need to get out of your way. We can paint a picture of your son and what he means for all of us. Thank you, Lord, for what you did. Jesus Christ came out for Thank you. You may be seated. Um, you know, throughout the years, there's been some popular TV shows that have really been on, on, on come on TV, some sitcoms. Friends, Cheers, Seinfeld, you know, some, some sitcoms that, that really are funny. And I, I believe they reflect the need in our society to find a place of togetherness, a place of belonging. I think that's what these sitcoms really showed you, how, how there was people who came together, just the bond that they had. Ever how messed up they were, they still had a, a bond and a friendship. Um, here, here's a, a, a theme song for one. I'm sure most people can get this one. So sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. They're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see our troubles are all the same. You want to be where everyone knows your name. Cheers. You know, that's like I said, everybody, even though that was uh, uh, in a bar, the, the setting was in a bar, it, it wasn't that family atmosphere. They all just came together. They all knew each other's names, the, the troubles, the problems, and, and they just really banded together. And it was a a, a very funny show on how they how they did that, you know. Um, that's what made those shows so popular. It was a sense of, of belonging, a sense of, of everyone knowing your name. They spoke to that basic need, and that's to have friends, people who came together. You know, God's word is always, always um, known and revealed the deep need within people, and our church responsibility. To help people meet this need of belonging, of coming together, of everyone knowing your name. You know, we look at the garden of Adam and Eve and how, how Adam was by himself and God took care of that problem of loneliness by, through him, bringing Eve into the world so they could have a bond, a belonging, a being together. I believe that need remains in each and every one of us today. I think it's one of the great things about a church, uh, of coming together, of fellowship, of belonging, of sharing values, of sharing hurts and then sharing joys. You know, I, I really think that's part of the, uh, the great aspect of, of having a, a group of people like that, a place to gather, belong, and grow, and become what God wants us to be. I mean, I, I look, some of us are here, you either came to church or, or here today because of somebody invited you, you know, and I think that's, that's great that, that, that we can do that. And I think a friend is one of the most valued possessions that anybody can ever have. And I think one of the greatest compliments that I could ever be given is that, man, Greg is a good friend to me. And I think that we can all, all feel like that way because of, I can think of the ones that I have in my life that are my friends and just how much I need them. So I got, 
I know I usually dig into the scripture and then go with points. I'm just going straight out with points right off the bat today. Um, so I got four points I want to I want to go through, uh, but we're going to be going into the scripture also. Um, four things I want to know about what a true friend really is. Um, a true friend is someone who looks out for you. That's my first first point. A true friend really is someone who looks out for you. If we look in look in chapter. Uh, or verse 9 here in chapter 4, it says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for the labor. Two are better than one. When two stand together, it's better than one. Um, most people here know who Jackie Robinson is. He was the first African American to ever play baseball. He broke that color barrier in, in baseball for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Now, when he first came out, when he would go to other stadiums and, and other places, I mean, he was. I mean, no telling what he was. He was called everything under the book. People hated him because he was an African American playing baseball. Well, he was in his hometown and he committed an error. And his home, his home team, the crowd started jeering him, started calling him names, started mocking him, started telling him to get out of baseball. They was ruining baseball. And he stood there just, just crushed from this. Well, Pee Wee Reese was the shortstop for the Brooklyn Dodgers. He came over, stood next to Robinson, put his arm around Robinson, and faced the crowd. Well, the crowd, because of what Pee Wee Reese did, quieted down, and they started playing baseball again. Robinson went on to say that that arm around him, for Pee Wee Reese to come and stand next to him and put his arm, saved his baseball career. Because he didn't think that he could go on. And when Pee Wee Reese came up beside him, showing that he cared for him. That's the type of friends that we need. That's the type of friends that, that we've got to have. With someone who looks out for you. You know, two are stronger than one. Man, have we ever felt like we've been on an island before? Like there, we've never had a friend in our life? That, that, that there's, like we're just out there by ourselves. And then one friend comes up to you and says, I'm here for you. Doesn't that make you feel like you, you can then accomplish what you need to accomplish because you've got someone that's looking out for you. But I'm telling you, the Bible's not silent here. It, it doesn't just talk about Jesus in heaven. It, it talks about every type of practical subject you can imagine. And, and it talks about friendships. You can go throughout the Bible and see all the different friendships that are in the Bible. You know, and, and it really gives us a roadmap of what we can do to help friends to look out for them. We can pray for friends, can't we? I mean, when we're sitting there praying for our or for um, God to help us pay our bills, can we pray for a friend that God helps them pay their bills if they're struggling financially? If we're praying for family relationships in our own life, can we pray for our friends' relationships in their life? I mean, you know, when we when we pray for people, God changes things, and I think that's one of the greatest things we could ever do for a friend is to pray for them. We can encourage our friends, can't we? You know, um, as we live. Um, uh, we need help along the way. I mean, there are challenges in every aspect of our life. It's important for us to have people in our lives that will get behind us, you know, that, that comes alongside of us, that encourages us, you know, when we're doing well and say, hey, keep it up. But when we're having problems or there, so you can get through this, you can make it, you can do this, you know, I'll help you do that. In Proverbs 17, 17, Gives us a definition of a friend. It says, a friend loves at all times. And a brother is born of adversity. But a friend loves at all times. We can't really improve on the definition. To have someone who remains true to us under all circumstances is really one of the life's greatest blessings that we can have. The support and encouragement only an intimate friend can, can offer is sorely needed. And I guess if you want to be a true friend, to always be there, have somebody always be there. You know what? We need to be a friend to somebody so they can be a friend back to us. If you want to be a friend that, that prays and encourages, then we need to do that to them, and then you'll have that back. A true friend will always look out for you. Second thing I want to see, a true friend is, is someone who helps you after you stumble. Verse 10 says, for if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. Man, woe to you for the ones who don't have anybody there to pick you up. Don't you 
kind of feel sorry for someone like that. When you have a friend, when you have somebody who's there, and they're going to have that hand down, they're going to be willing to pick you up. You know? Because you're going to stumble. You're going to fall. And there's no two ways around it. But they're going, to, they're going to pick you up. You're going to pick them up. You know, we think a friend is sometimes is only there for good times. Only there to have fun with, to laugh with. The Bible tells us that a friend is someone who, who helps us get over the tough times. How many here wants a friend solely for good times? Solely for laughs? Solely for fun? Who here just wants a friend for that? I Man, I believe we're really naive if we think that we want friends for that because when trouble really happens, how many times you picked up the phone and called somebody and they won't come and help you? You know, we really have to understand that our best friends are not the ones who laugh with us. Our best friends are the ones we have cried with us. There was a uh, a, a young boy, his mom sent him to the store to get a loaf of bread. And he was gone longer than normal. His mom was getting a little worried. Finally, finally he shows up and she says, where have you been? I was worried about you. He said, well, Mom, on the way back from the store, I saw a, a, a little boy whose bike was broken. So I helped him. She says, well, you didn't know. You don't know how to fix a bike, do you? He says, no, but I sat down next to him and cried with him. Sometimes we need a friend to sit down and just cry with us, to help us, to pick us up. You know, Proverbs 4.12 tells us, when you walk, your steps will not be impeded, and if you run, you will not stumble. So we have to understand that, that even though we're going to stumble and we're going to fall, a good friend will help us, pick us up. He will help us walk a straight line. He will, he will help us do that. You know, we don't need friends that's going to run us down the wrong path. We need friends that's going to guide us and direct us and help us. Because when we stumble, the true friend will be there to pick you up. They won't judge, but help. They won't condemn, but show you how to get back. A true friend will have their hand out instead of their back turned. And this kind of just leads right into my next point. Because a true friend is someone who holds you accountable. True friend is someone who holds you accountable. Because the Ashes 4.11 says, Furthermore, if two lie down together, they keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Now, there's a lot of cold times in our life, you know. Uh, there's times when, when we're, like, if, if you've ever been laying in bed and it's just been kind of cold, but, like, our, our, my youngest friend says a heater. If he lays next to you, he's going to warm you up. You know, that body heat will uh, warm you up instantly. You know, you'll start sweating. But you know, if you're by yourself, there's a lot of times that you feel like you're out in the cold. You know, when we are having relationship problems and health problems, financial problems, struggling problems, we need a friend to tell us to help us through those times. Man, I believe that one of the reasons people go down the wrong path that people don't do the right thing is that they don't have somebody to stand up and say, hey, where are you going? What are you doing? You know that's not right. You know you know good and well that you shouldn't be going down that path. You know, and there's times when you get mad or upset over that, right? Because nobody wants to be confronted. You know, nobody wants to be, nobody wants to be like, like, you're not telling me what to do or how to live my life. Nobody wants to, wants to be Held sometimes to account. I believe that's a problem in our society that there's no accountability for people's actions in our society. That people can just go out and do what they want to do when they want to do it and nobody stands up and says, hey, you're wrong for doing that. Well, I'm telling you, a good friend, a good friend will do that. We'll go back to Proverbs 27, 17. It says, iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And that's the truth. You know, our men's group, our women's group, that's what we do. We sharpen each other. You know, we get in there and we talk about things and, we, and we're able to hold each other accountable for things and, and we're able to, 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 to show each other things. I'll tell you what, a true friend will help you do what you have to do. Even though they're going to gonna maybe have to step up. Maybe they're about to tell you, hey, look, you're not doing the right thing. You need to go a certain, do certain things. 
We need an accountability partner. We need good friends that's going to tell us, hey, you, you're doing the wrong thing. You know, uh, Alicia's uh, grand, he had a guy named Rawls. Because kind of, Grant had a, a drinking problem. And Rawls was his accountability partner. And every time Grant would fall off his horse, so to say, the wagon, Rawls would be there to pick him up and hold him accountable to that. And if you go into Washington, D.C., you'll see a, uh, there's a tribute to Grant. He's on the back of a horse. And if you go right down Pennsylvania Avenue, there's a park called Rawlings Park. There's a statue of just an ordinary man that kept Grant from falling off his horse. Accountability partners. Being, being held accountable. I'm telling you what, a true friend is someone who tells the truth about you. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's the bottom line. I want to know if my work stinks or I'm being hurtful or stupid. You know what? I expect my friends to save me from myself. That's what, that's what a good friend will do. They'll hold you accountable. They'll save you from yourself. Tell you what you need to know and how to help you to get back in correctly. So the last thing I want to see is a true friend is someone who stands with you. Who stands with you. In verse 12, it says, If one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. A quarter of three strands is not quickly torn apart. Well, that's some pretty nitty-gritty stuff, really. It, it shows us that real friendship is proven by what we do, not just by what we say. What do you do when a friend is being attacked by an enemy or somebody out there? What do you do when, when, when a friend needs some help? Do you defend your friend? You know, or do you turn your back? What what is it? I mean, a true friend is going to step up and 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 be there for them. And you go into the Bible, you know, and, and the uh, act of true friendship, David and Jonathan, in my mind, is, is the the greatest friendship in the Bible. You know, Jonathan is, is King Saul's son, and and he's after David. But David and Jonathan has made a commitment to each other. I mean, in Samuel chapter twenty. Verse 42, David says, we have sworn friendship with each other in the name of the Lord. And we see that, that Saul helped David escape his dad's clutches. You know, what a friend. He stood up for David. He helped David. Man, if you stand up for a friend, you're going to be, you put yourself in that same spot that his enemies now become your enemies. That keeps a lot of people from standing up for friends. They're afraid of what others might think. I'm not saying defend your friend if they're wrong, okay? Because that's what the accountability party comes from. But I'm just saying take a stand with your friend. Be there for them. Press the issue if the situation is serious enough. Do what you have to do, but don't turn your back. You know, you might have to make a phone call. You might have to be the one to initiate standing up for your friend, but you need to stand up. In John 15, 13, it says, Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. Of course, that's Jesus talking, talking about how he's going to lay his life down. But, but what a true statement he is. There's no greater love than laying your life down for your friends. Now, maybe I'm not talking about you're going to have to die for someone, but I'm talking about sacrificial love by listening, helping, encouraging, and giving. To be a true friend means that someone we just need to stand by their sides, to come along their side, to, to walk with them. Here it says a, string, a single cord can be broken, but when you weave two or three together, you can stand strong. That's not easily broken. You can't, you can't just break three strands. True friends intertwine with each other and it's always there for each other. So to wrap this up, um, a British publication once offered a prize for best definition of a friend. Among the thousands of answers received, these were some of the following. It says, one who multiplies joys, divides grief, and whose honesty is inevitable. Another one says, one who understands our silence. Another says, a volume of sympathy bound in cloth. Another one says, a watch that beats true for all times and never run down, never runs down. But the winning definition of a friend was a friend is 
One who comes in when the whole world has gone out. I think that's a good definition of a friend, isn't it? One who comes in when the whole world has gone out. I, I thought about this as I've been going over this sermon and stuff. How many times I've failed someone for lack of serious food. I'm not a perfect person. Maybe I didn't make that phone call when I needed to make it. Maybe I didn't go see them when I should have went and saw them. Maybe I didn't stand and defend them when I should have been. And I, maybe I didn't hold them accountable when I should have held them accountable. But I have failed many a people in my friendship. And I think if we're honest with each other, we all have. Because we are imperfect beings. And even though how hard we try, we still fail. I'm here to tell you, there's one person that's our friend that will never fail us. And it's Jesus Christ. He has never failed anybody. He is the greatest friend that anyone could ever have. He sets a level of love that is supreme, that is greater than anything else. He loves us with a level of love that, that we can never fully comprehend. The standard he sets is higher than, than, than any of us are able to understand. You know, he has his own standards and his, of his own actions. He came to this earth with one purpose in mind. He came to this earth so, so that he would die for us, so that he would take our place, so we can have an everlasting life, so we can have a way back to his Father. That's why he came to this earth. And he loved us enough to sacrifice absolute everything for us. Maybe you don't realize it or maybe you're just ignoring it. But Jesus loves us with an undying love. A love that is stronger than any other form of love in this life. The love of Jesus is stronger than any pain you may experience. Anything that you that 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 that, that that you go through, he, he will comfort us in the midst of our deepest pains. I mean, he, he makes it clear that he will never leave us or never forsake us. It's stronger than any failure we have ever committed. He will always stand with us in our sorrows. And he gives us confidence when we are strong and courage when we are weak. The love of Jesus is stronger than any fault we may have. There's nothing that we can do to make Jesus love us any less when we come to him. He loves us with an unconditional love with no strings attached. There are no bargains to be made. He just loves us all the same. Being a friend of Christ means that you have a service and you have everything about him. That's who we have as a friend. The greatest friend ever is Jesus. I encourage us all to, to, to step up and be friends to each other. But I think that you're, to be a, a, a great and true friend, if somebody don't know Christ, that's the greatest thing you can do, is to tell him who he is. Just what kind of friend are you? Please stand up.